Hello and welcome to the Orioles 2023 season preview and how it relates to the card world. Uh, the Orioles definitely surpassed expectations last year. They were 83 and 79. Uh, I think they won 27 more games than they did the, the previous season. Um, they, I mean, they exceeded expectations so much that I think their win-loss total before the season started was 60. So they were projected to win easily 100 games and, and they actually had a winning record. Uh, didn't finish last in their division. And up until like four days before the season was over, they were still in contention for a wild card spot. So Orioles, by all means, in every measurable aspect, exceeded expectations last year. Uh, with that said, I want to temper expectations going into next year. Uh, I don't think they did enough to make this team better. Um, you know, they're one of the most exciting uh, talent ro talented rosters in baseball. They have a lot of young prospects that are here now that are coming and that are, I mean, in the pipeline. Their top 20 uh, in baseball would be, a, you know, a pretty respectable top 20 MLB list. They have arguably one of the top prospects, if not number one. I believe he is number one on some lists in Gunnar Henderson. Um, you know, we'll kind of go through all their prospects, but Adley Rushman's already here at the big league level. They just drafted 1-1 one, one again at Jackson Holiday. Um, they have three infielders knocking, three infield slash outfielders knocking on the door right now to get in, and then two pitchers who could very well make the opening day roster in the starting rotation. So we'll go over all that, but as far as what they did in the offseason, I'm not a huge fan. Uh, and I think if you asked around Baltimore, they expected a lot more. They expected this team to go after a frontline starter, maybe two frontline starters or two number twos to really give this team a chance to win some ball games. And as of right now, I don't think they will. Uh, they did go sign pitchers, and Kyle Gibson was the first one they signed. Kyle Gibson, uh, you know, he's going to be an innings eater. We know who he is. We'll, we'll go through the rotation, but he's entering his age 35 season. Uh, they Adam, added Adam Frazier. Uh, Frazier is kind of a band-aid to second base. He's he's going to be here for this year. He's a good veteran presence, um, some up and down points in his career, but we'll talk more about him. They brought back Michael Gibbons for the back of the end of the bullpen. James McCann was a nice pickup. Uh, he's going to rotate with Adley Rushman at catcher, DH, and, and be, again, a nice veteran presence with that really young core. Uh, Ryan O'Hearn, uh, just some bench depth. He might not even make the opening day roster, but he'll be around. And then Cole Irvin was a big trade they made. They, they gave up that Daryl Hernandez prospect to the A's um, to bring in Cole Irvin. And Irvin's another innings eater who could exceed expectations, could be a little better than we think, but he's a little bit older as well, so he's not this you know stud pitcher that, in my opinion, they needed, and I think a lot of Orioles fans would have expected them to bring in. Uh, one bonus addition this season would be John Means. Uh, he missed most of last season, late April, I want to say. He, he had Tommy John surgery. Probably won't see him back until mid-July-ish, but, you know, kind of a bonus addition that at least they do get John Means, who was their de facto ace without question. Uh, losses very minor. They lost Jordan Lyles. Lyles was, again, innings eater, pitcher. I mean, we're not going to sugarcoat it. He's he's nothing special, just, just covering some innings. Kyle Gibson, Cole Urban will help cover those innings that he's missing, and then hopefully Grayson Rodriguez and D.L. Hall make up the loss as well. Uh, Storylines going into the season, like I said, they just – they over exceeded expectations last year, and I even think the front office, with with what they did this offseason, tells us that they don't think they're ready to compete either. That they're probably still one more year away. Uh, this young core is coming, and you know, if you're a Baltimore fan, if you can suffer through potentially a 70 win at best season, you know, be excited for the future. They are still very good. Uh, they're, they're still missing rotation depth. That's the number one problem. And, and not only rotation depth, but rotation skill. Their pitchers are just guys. I mean, they're, they're there to fill spots. Uh, they're not going to get a ton of strikeouts. They're, they're going to have a lot of balls in play. With Baltimore moving the fences back, sure, they're, they're going to give up a few less home runs. But overall, I mean, Baltimore, I, I wish they would have done more. Um, and then, you know, biggest questions going into the season, Grayson Rodriguez and D.L. Hall. They're both young, exciting starting pitchers. We should see them this year. My opinion is opening day for both, but we'll see. Uh, but they're still question marks. We don't know what to expect from them at the big league level. Can they get swings and misses? Can they get outs? Can they get major league hitters out? So we'll see how that pro progresses, but we'll jump right into the starting rotation. Uh, I have to pick a number one. I have to put someone in that ace role. 
this is this guy's not an ace. It's Kyle Gibson, age thirty five season. Um, if you want to do, if you want to look up his rookie cards, they're twenty thirteen tops. I believe he was a twin. I'm ninety nine percent sure Minnesota twin. Um, not not a guy to go crazy collectible. He's been bounced around the league. He's he's an innings eater who you know pitching into your age thirty five season in the MLB is something to be you know, celebrated. But unfortunately for Kyle Gibson, you know they have to fill a hundred and uh, 50 starting rotation spots and and he's not even in the top half in my opinion he had a five, over five era in 160 innings last year so that's a lot of runs to be given up that's a lot of bullpen taxing because i'm you know he's not going deep into games 160 innings is good don't get me wrong you, you know that's why they brought him in so he can pitch that many but you know he's a year older maybe he only gets him 150 and Again, I don't see his numbers getting better. I don't see him improving. But maybe, maybe I'm the Kyle Gibson hater here, and the guy comes in and just destroys pitching or destroys some hitters for a little bit. Uh, he's just a straight up depth depth guy, and he he as the number one pitcher or opening day starting pitcher likely is kind of worrisome. I mean, that's that's really that's it. I wish they would have done more. Uh, they brought in Cole Irvin. That was the age trade I talked about. Uh, he's a 2019 Tops Update rookie, so you'll men- you'll hear me mention 2019 Update a, a lot through these uh, videos, just because Update had a ton of rookies and a ton of rookies that, you know, they weren't just making cards to make cards. They were making cards of a lot of MLB roster-ready players in 2019 Update, and that's the last season that Update was, you know, a true update. They had a lot of late-season rookies in there and a lot of depth. Uh, but like I said, I'll, I'll mention them a lot, or that that set a lot throughout these videos. Uh, Cole Irvin had a 3.98 ERA over 181 innings. Um, that was last year in Oakland. That's that's pretty good. I, I mean, it it could get better, and it could drop. You know, 15 or half a run an inning, and all of a sudden we're we're again at four and a half ERA, and we're a little worried. Uh, he was nine and 13, which I I will not put any stock in wins and losses but understand that he did that in oakland with an offense that didn't score a ton of runs so he could have 12 wins 14 wins this season with baltimore because that young core hopefully they do put up some runs and put him in a position to win some games we'll, we'll see it's it's really hard to project but cole Irvin has been around he did have some some really good stints last season with the a's so we'll see if he can continue to get better and hopefully i mean anchor this pitching staff for now I use the anchor term lightly. He's not a big strikeout guy, so his ceiling is limited. But, you know, good good offense in front of him and a better bullpen behind him in uh, Baltimore. So we'll see. Maybe he does get a few more wins. And, and all of a sudden, if you're a fantasy guy, his, his fantasy value is up. Uh, Kyle Bradish is probably their projected number three. As far as if I was buying cards, and I will admit I just bought a Kyle Bradish uh, Independence Day rookie from 2022 update. Again, 2022 update is a set I'm going to mention a lot in these videos. Uh, he is uh, he's only 26. I say only 26 because he's right at that cusp of if he was 27, I probably wouldn't be excited. If he was 24, I'd probably be just tooting the Kyle Bradish horn loud and proud. Um, but he did average almost a strikeout per inning last season, and he looked really, really good at the end of the season. Uh, four starts from August 26th to the end of the year of seven innings or more. I believe two of those were eight inning outings. And two wins versus Houston. I don't know if you remember Houston. They won the World Series in 2022. Uh, and in those four starts of seven innings or more, he gave up one run. Not one run each, just one run across all four starts. So in my opinion, he is a really good number three um i don't know if he has a little more in the tank i don't know what the development looks like in baltimore you know you you look at teams that have really good developmental pitching where we just expect pitchers to get better cleveland is one of them miami is one of them i don't know if baltimore is there yet i don't know how much uh their front office is improving on you know the coaching staff for the pitching staff so we'll see if cal bradish takes a step forward this year we could he could be something to get a little excited about. He's got a 95 mile an hour fastball with a plus slider. If he works on his command, that's probably the the big knock on knock on him. If he can work on his command, he could be someone that we're talking about mid season as a as a mild breakout. I don't think all of a sudden we're just going to go crazy for Kyle Bradish, but he is a pitcher who's who can take a step forward. You know, Cole Irvin, age 29. 
Kyle Gibson, he's 35. N- nothing to get excited about in the card world, but Kyle Bradish, he could be someone to target. Uh, Dean Kramer is a 2021 Tops rookie, um, and I know that for a fact because I think in every single product I opened in 2021 Tops, I pulled a Dean Kramer autograph. Uh, I'm going to make a you know a quilt out of him. I'm kidding. Dean Kramer was everywhere. He's entering his age 27 season. Um, he he had maybe a better year than we realized last year. He had a 3.23 ERA, um, which is decent. ERA is not the only metric and probably isn't even a great metric. We should do expected ERA or, or even uh, FIP, you know, fielding independent pitching. That's kind of something that gives us a slightly better value on what he would do with an average defense. Um, he had a 2.8 war, which is a number that kind of jumped out at me. It was more surprising than I realized. So Dean Kramer is a good depth guy. And, you know, they signed Kyle Gibson for, I want to say, 10 mil and an option for, for 2024. But if this younger pitching staff and younger pieces of this team do better, Kyle Bradish, Dean Kramer, namely, then maybe we don't see Kyle Gibson out there as much as I hope or as much as i expect them to jog him out there but maybe we see him a little less and we see some of these younger pitchers who have a little more talent and some more room for growth so dean kramer's on the list of someone who could get a little better but he doesn't strike out a ton um something that really helps him is the infield defense in baltimore they're one of the better infield defenses so his era is is propped up by a defense that makes better than average plays they have good range jorge mateo is an excellent fielding shortstop so dean kramer fine not gonna go too crazy uh and actually he came over in that 2018 machado trade if you remember when they sent him to uh la that that short stint in la with the dodgers that didn't go over very well uh he was the trade piece or one of the trade pieces there were a few few guys in that deal they came back to baltimore so you know maybe they're starting to reap the benefits of that he threw 125 innings last year he did have a complete game shutout against the astros of all teams also so you know the orioles played the astros really tough in in august and september pretty funny to look at uh the most exciting pitcher in the projected starting rotation for the orioles is grayson rodriguez uh he still has not debuted in major league baseball so if you're looking for grayson rodriguez cards 2018 bowman draft bowman draft uh the the one thing I will warn about Grayson Rodriguez is we have been talking about him for three years. You know, 2020, lost season hurts everyone, but 2021, uh, there were rumors that maybe he could leak into the end of the year call-ups. What did the Orioles have to lose? Nothing. 2022, when they're making a, a playoff push that no one expected, maybe we thought Grayson Rodriguez was going to come up and kind of give them a shot in the arm towards the end of the year. Maybe he can, you know, pitch this team into the playoffs it's a lot to ask of a a call up but the excitement was there the possibility was there they didn't make the call they didn't bring him up he he seems like he's a can't miss prospect so why have we waited a a year and a half of him being right on the cusp of being around being at the major league level for him to be here so that that always worries me but he is only entering his age 23 season so he's young enough that he can develop right now at the major league level from opening day you know maybe compete for the al rookie of the year but how many innings will they let him throw? Um, maybe a hundred. He, you know, he if he has big K numbers plus the elite defense behind him, it could be a great combo where he does break out. And if they let him go over a hundred, 120 innings at the major league level, uh, he's someone that later in the season, probably 2023 tops update rookies, is a guy that I will target. Uh, if he struggles and John Means comes back in that you know mid Julyish range that I mentioned earlier, he could see a. a a demotion back to triple a or maybe that's where they they make a move with kyle gibson or cole irvin and they send them right back out the door we'll, we'll see it's it's really hard to say it's too early but he is someone to be excited about he has an excellent change up decent fastball and he's he's a guy that could make make big strides this year and, and be the i mean de facto prospect number one pitcher that is coming through the system i think he's number seven on a lot of lists or or in the top 10 of most mlb lists so that should give you some indication that not only am i high on him but he's he's a highly rated prospect across the entire league uh dl hall is competing for that fifth spot i don't think he's going to beat grayson rodriguez but he's another top 15 top 20 prospect on a lot of lists he did come up last year i want to say for just a uh, september 1st call up 
when rosters expanded. He got a little bit of time. We have not seen his base rookie. I want to say he is a silver pack rookie in 2023 Series 1, but I would put money down that in the 2023 Series 2 checklist will be D.L. Hall's first rookie. So if you're looking for parallels, that would be the one to target. Um, <clears throat> Long-term outlook on D.L. Hall feels like his chances of being a starter or reliever are around the 50-50 range. So, you know, Josh Hader is always that comp we use because he was such an electric, what could have been amazing starter, but ended up back into the bullpen guy, extremely strong. But I would say D.L. Hall might follow that Josh Hader path where the Orioles have Felix Bautista at the end of the bullpen, but but maybe this starting five and John Means as their potential sixth starter, D.L. Hall goes into the bullpen with a live fastball who can give you multi-innings and really just dominates that back end. And you know, this year they're probably not going to make the playoffs, but in 2024, if, the, if this is a playoff contending team, D.L. Hall could be a weapon out of the bullpen. We've seen it for multiple teams over multiple years where they are using these longer relief guys to get seven outs, nine outs, ten outs uh, after a starter has, you know, done a good job or maybe struggled. So D.L. Hall could be a starter, could be a reliever. I put the chances right at 50-50. Uh, he's got the makeup to do either if he stays healthy and can give them length. Uh, from, from the starting role, then great. I could see him being a great starter. Uh, Bruce Zimmerman is probably in the seven hole. I mentioned seven to eight pitchers on all these videos because you need you need more starting pitchers. Uh, 150 starts, 162 starts need to be made by somebody. So Bruce Zimmerman will probably pitch at some point. Uh, he pitched in the major leagues in 20, 21, 22. So he actually does not have a Topps rookie logo card. 2021 update is his rookie, but there is no rookie logo on it. Uh, that's something I try and note because it is something that people will overlook and I think will lose value. In 2015, J.T. Romulo was a good point or a, a good one to look at. 2013, Corey Kluber. Uh, these cards had... They were their first rookie cards, but did not have a rookie logo. So it's something that a lot of people, if they're flicking through boxes really fast, like if you sort your 2021 update, only pull out stars and rookies, you're going to zoom right past Bruce Zimmerman. So something to note, maybe the price point never reaches because you have to explain that it's his rookie. That's always a deterrent for cards. If you have to explain why it's valuable, it's probably not that valuable. Uh, but Bruce Zimmerman, 6 ERA, I, I would say, hey, great. You know, you're, you're a depth guy. He's expendable. Uh, maybe we see him in a uh, relief role as a mop-up duty. Uh, he's just going to be a depth guy. Nothing to be excited. Uh, other names we might see start for the Orioles, but no one no one is raising any flags for me. Is Mike Bauman, Spencer Watkins, Andrew Rahm. Uh, I would say their best prospect after Rodriguez and D.L. Hall is Cade Povich. Povich should start the year at AA. He showed some some really good signs last year. He was in that Minnesota trade for Jorge Lopez right at the middle of the season last year. So Cade Povich is probably next man up as far as prospects, cards we could buy, cards we could project, uh, pitchers to look for. Uh, we'll move to the lineup. They're expected one through nine. Uh, I, I actually think their one through nine is set. Minus one player could... Uh, could fall out of rotation, so we'll see. Uh, I'll obviously talk about him. Cedric Mullins, leadoff guy. He's you know he had a 30-30 season in 2021, coming off of switch hitting. I say off of switch hitting because he stopped switch hitting. He he predominantly hit from his main side and had a breakout season. Uh, his rookie cards are in 2019 tops. He was in series one. So if you're looking for Cedric Mullins rookies, they're everywhere. Just search 2019 tops Mully, and it'll come up. Uh, extreme, extreme breakout, 30-30 from a guy that we, I mean, no one was projecting to do that. He was a bottom of the barrel, $1, $2 Bowman, or Topps Chrome Auto to having a just incredible season. Um, and, and like I said, it was because he dropped switch hitting. I wish more players would do that. I understand that it is maybe something that when you're constructing a lineup, it's a very valuable piece, but the reality is most players are, are better from one side. And if they worked on only that side, both, both versus right-handed and left-handed pitchers, it could develop, you know, they could develop a, a little bit more power or just a better swing overall. So Cedric Mullins, call your friends, tell everyone, stop switch hitting. And, you know, my, my leading candidate in all of baseball, and I know this is an Orioles video, uh, I'd actually tell Wander to stop switch hitting. Don't get me wrong, he's great from both sides, but he could be elite, elite just top of the top of the class if he dropped switch hitting. You didn't hear that from me, though. 
Uh, he still had a really good season last year. Even if he didn't go 30-30, he had 16 homers, 34 steals. Uh, so 20-40 going into this year is a reasonable expectation. Maybe that power comes back just a little bit. And then with the new stolen base rules, he bumps his 34 to 40 steals. Could easily happen. He's a t age 28 season. He's still right in his peak performance stage. So Cedric Mullins, uh, I feel like since he didn't, didn't go 30-30 again, people kind of gave him the boot. But he's still really good. He's still a great leadoff hitter. And if you look at the Orioles prospects and what's coming up in the next two to three years, if you constructed this perfect team and every single prospect pans out, Cedric Mullins is still holding down center field in two to three years, in my opinion. So uh, I, I, I like Seti. He, he's, he's a beast. Uh, and with the improved lineup behind him of Adley, Gunner, and then Anthony Santander in the four hole, his run and RBI totals could improve. So I, I like Cedric Mullins going into uh, next season to both, you know, maybe, I, I don't want to say grab 30-30 again, because I, I think his home runs were kind of propped up uh, with that that fence being in and left field, and now, now that they've moved it back, I don't think he gets 30 again, but maybe he has 40 doubles, 20 homers, and 40 steals. That's a phenomenal season and a guy to be excited about. Uh, in the two hole is Adley Rushman, 2023 top series one rookie. He was the poster child. He was, uh, you know, we knew he was going to be in 2023 series one in, in probably June of last season. Uh, as soon as he got the call up designation on his tops now card, we know that he's going to be in the next season of cards. Uh, he finished second in AL rookie of the year voting to Julio Rodriguez. Uh, no one, you know, I don't want to say anyone couldn't argue it, but it'd be tough to argue. Julio was a, was the clear number one, but, Adley did put up a 5.2 war. Uh, he, he's a great defensive catcher. He's a great hitter. He's a really good all-around player. There's a reason he got that 1-1 one -one designation in 2019. Uh, adding James McCann really helps, in my opinion. I think Adley gets in the game for 104, or gets in the lineup for 140 games between catcher, DH, and first base. I think we see Adley a lot. Uh, and maybe it's 150 games. Maybe they really, you know, see how durable he is. It's his age 25 season, so... This is the time where he should be playing as many games as possible. Um, it, I did say, you know, he, I mentioned that 1-1 one, one draft tag, and I think he's always going to have that. So his card prices are pretty expensive, but I think it's it's part of that, like, 1-1 one, one tag that, that's attached to him. But he is the, he's the sign of the Orioles' youth coming. When he came up, he was kind of the first major prospect of, of this long list of deep, deep prospects. And he's like the the... The sign of a new era and hopefully a brand new team and exciting young talented team so i think that's propping up his prices a little bit adley's really good but it's hard to invest in a catcher for me uh the reason for that they don't last very long look at buster posey buster posey from 2010 to 2014 was a fantasy and hobby and baseball stud like he you know he had the trifecta and then at age 34, he retires from baseball. He had 12 really good seasons. Uh, two, I say 12 really good seasons. He had he had 10 really good seasons and two where we weren't really sure, uh, you know, what to expect the, the following year from Buster Posey. And then and then he's just off the map. It's not just health related. It's not just skill related. There were some other factors for Buster Posey, but it's really hard to st be a sustainable you know power hitting catcher in Major League Baseball. Adley could transition to first throughout his career. But it's hard to say, you know, when that happens, how many games he plays next year, how many games he plays moving forward. Um, not, not a ton to add to, about Adley other than he actually met expectations, which is crazy. If you remember his 2019 Bowman Chrome uh, or Bowman Draft autos, as soon as they dropped, were, were hitting six, $700, and people were just knocking on it. They were saying, that's crazy, that's crazy, that's crazy. And then he did this, and then he performed, and then he had a 5.2 war at the major league level in his rookie season. He struggled in in the first, I want to say, 30 to 40 games. His average dropped below 150 at some point with, with zero home runs. But then after that, he continued to improve. We saw the power stroke come in a little bit, and it's a really good sign that he was able to adjust, and maybe that adjustment period you know, is already over. He, of course, he's going to have slumps in his major league career, but maybe we've seen the worst for Adley already, and it's time for him to hit the ground running and be... Uh, a leader for this team, that's one of the intangibles by him, is that he is going to be uh, a loud voice in the clubhouse in a good way, you know, in a, in a great teammate type sense. So 
I'm excited to watch Adley this year. I'm excited to watch the Orioles. I'm not going to be investing or speculating on his cards. I think the the hype is already built in. Um, but if this team is a perennial World Series contender in the next three to five years, Adley's going to be at the front of that, and maybe those cards are worth five times as much. And I'm saying they're too expensive now. Maybe they're, you know, maybe they're worthy of a new car at that time. So Adley's a stud. Uh, if you if you like him buy his cards collect his cards i would love it he's a great baseball player he's a great teammate it, he seems like a really good person overall so if you want to collect him that's great if you're looking to buy or flip cards he's on my avoid list uh gunner henderson probably in the three hole for the orioles he's a top prospect on most boards most uh you know mlb keith law one or two uh, he's rookie of the year eligible. He did come up a little bit last season, but but kept his rookie of the year uh, tag. So he he is eligible. He's probably the AL favorite. Um, and, and in my opinion, I'd lock him in for the win now. Of course, I'm just a guy with a microphone uh, st- staring at you, telling you, hey, Gunnar Henderson's a great baseball player, but he's entering only his age 22 season. He's more than three years younger than Adley Rushman. So we're excited about Adley because he has that 1-1 tag. But from an offensive standpoint, from a speculative standpoint, from a you know prospecting standpoint, I think Gunnar Henderson is the better buy. Uh, he is also in 2023 Series 1, inserts, rookies, autos, all that fun stuff. And they're both also in 2019 Bowman Draft. I'm going to mention 2019 Bowman Draft a lot in this video uh, because the Orioles, they nailed that draft. Uh, Adley Rushman, Gunnar Henderson, and I'm going to bring up uh, Joey Ortiz later. Uh, he is likely to be a, thir- a full-time third baseman in his career. Right now, they have Jorge Mateo at shortstop. Uh, Gunner's probably the third third baseman. He's a little big for shortstop. He can play it. Don't get me wrong. He can play it. But I think third base is better a better fit. Um, and and the, the, this is kind of a you know like nuanced opinion. This doesn't matter at all. But Adley has has proven he could be a major league baseball player. Gunner still needs to do a little bit. Um, if if Adley's newness wears off and he's just an everyday guy who's good but not great, uh, Gunnar Henderson could be the new it guy in Baltimore. He could be the more demanded player, even if he's having a similar offensive output to Adley. And I know that's silly to say, like, who cares? But at three years younger, three years of MLB experience and potentially uh, looking at future investment for card prices, I don't even like the word investment. I like the word speculation because investing, flipping, whatever you want to call it, it's gambling. It's tough. You can't project how these players are going to do. All these can't miss guys in the last 10 years. Some of them miss. Um, but with all that said, I do like him if you're buying cards to try and flip them for a value, more value later. Uh, in 112 games last season, Gunner almost went 20-20. I think it was 19-20. and 20. Um, So full season, you know, does that, does that mean he has 30-30 potential? I would say so. Uh, we'll, we'll see what, what the season brings, you know, if he struggles coming up into the season april may like most hitters do april and may is the worst offensive months for baseball so just keep an eye on that if gunner does struggle in april maybe it's a time to buy maybe it's a time to jump on his cards if you believe in the talent i definitely do um and and just the the other note i have here is 50th and mlb sprint speed i i knew he was fast but 50th is is much stronger than i expected so that's a good sign and like i said that 30 stolen base total seems like definitely within reach and my opinion is going into the 2023 offseason he could be the it guy the guy that works saying oh man i gotta have more cards i gotta have more cards i can't wait to see what he looks like in sapphire can't wait to see his cards in this product kind of like we were saying about julio rodriguez this offseason so i gunner's my number one he's my number two in my opinion i would buy gunner above almost all prospects going into this season gunner seems like the guy i just said people can't miss he could miss, but I like Gunner a lot. Uh, batting in the four holes, probably Anthony Santander. He has 2018 tops rookies. Uh, he was a Rule Five pick, came over from the uh, from Cleveland. I was going to say Indians. They were the Indians at that time, Guardians now. But he came over from Cleveland in a Rule Five. Uh, couldn't really stay healthy for the two or three seasons leading up to his breakout in 2021. Or excuse me, 20, 2019, he was on a 35 homer pace. In 2020, he was on a 48 homer pace. And in 2021, came off a little bit, he was on a 26 home run pace. So if he could stay, uh, if he could stay healthy, he has the power potential to really, really uh, be a great cleanup hitter in a team full of really young players. He's entering only his age 28 season. When he came over in that Rule 5 draft, he was a little young. That's why Cleveland didn't protect him. So, uh, 
he had a sneaky 35 homers last season. He could do that again. Uh, we, I just said in 2020 he was on a 48 home run pace. So, uh, you know, that was the COVID shortened season. So it's only a 60 game pace. Anyone can do anything for 30, 40 games. So I won't say like, hey, he could hit 50 home runs because I don't see that. But 35 homers, he just did it. Maybe he does. Maybe he hits a few more than that. And we're talking about him in the uh, AL home run race or AL all-star team right around June, July. I wish he got on base a little more. His 318 OBP last year is pretty weak. I don't like that number. It's actually higher than his career on base percentage. So Santander has the skill set to hit home runs, but he's one of those three true outcome guys, walks, home runs, strikeouts. I would love to see him get on base a little more. And, you know, especially with this lineup, uh, these young guys around him, Things could really break out for him. Um, he, he was hit by a pitch early in this spring training a couple days ago, but it, it looks like he's going to be fine. Um, his breakout in the baseball card world has already happened, so there may not be a ton of value, um, and it's unlikely that we'll see his cards take another boost, but not impossible. So Santander is a guy that is on my you know keep an eye on him list because he could have a season, a very good offensive production season, but I'm not going to go crazy either. His breakout. In, for baseball card world has probably already happened. Uh, batting fifth, Ryan Mountcastle, uh, 2021 tops rookie. Uh, he had a ton of hype coming into that 2021 season. If you remember, Series One came out in you know February, January, like it does early before the season started. Mountcastle was on the top of most people's lists of why they were buying Series One. Uh, he he did good in his rookie season, but he didn't live up to the hype that was coming in. And I will say in 2022, he was my bust pick. I thought the fences moving back in Baltimore for him were going to be a uh, uh, an issue. But he, he didn't bust. He didn't have a, you know just an awful season. But he did take a step backwards in every offensive category from 2021 to 2022. So maybe he is still working on some things and we see him take a step forward next season. Or this season, I should say, in 2023, he plays almost every day. So that's a big, big thing. You know, you, you got to be out there. You got to continue to improve. Uh, and he could benefit, again, from having more talent in the lineup as well. All of a sudden, you know, pitchers are worried about Gunner, Adley, and then they got to face Santander, who's going to take him deep. And then Mountcastle is that fourth guy that they face. And there's like, this this lineup doesn't quit. I got to I gotta get somebody out, and maybe he gets a few more pitches to him. Uh, lineup protection is kind of overrated. If you look at stats throughout uh, baseball, it's something that we, we say all the time. Oh, he's, he needs protection. He had protection. This guy, this guy, this guy. It's tough because every pitcher approaches different hitters different ways. So maybe he benefits, but also I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put any stock in that. He's entering only his age 26 uh, season, so he still could improve a lot. There's still a lot of room for improvement. Uh, I would say best case scenario, maybe he hits 40 homers. He did have 33 homers his rookie season. Did I write that down? I want to say it was 33. Um, but again, 30 homers, 30 doubles. That That's not even best case scenario. I'd say that's a above average output for him, but something that's definitely possible. Uh, Ramon Urias is the number six hitter for me. Uh, likely going to be the uh, kind of infield platoon guy who moves all over he he played third base last year he won a gold glove at third base last year but in my opinion gunners there jorge mateo there they're going to be the left side infielders for now um so i don't know what they do with urias they brought in adam frazier to play second mount castle is going to play uh adley's going to play so i don't know what they do with him maybe he gets some dh starts maybe he's a guy who who fills in at all the infield spots they got to find a spot for him because he's really good. Or maybe he becomes a trade piece. Uh, third base in MLB is kind of a weak spot right now. So there are teams that could add a third baseman. Uh, he has very, very, very limited 2021 rookies. I'm going to go over the list because it's so short. Uh, he has a 2021 Heritage High Number Chrome rookie. And that's it. He has a Chrome, his Purple Chrome, the Refractor, Red Refractor, Black, Gold, and Super. That's it. He didn't even make the base set checklist. I still haven't figured out what happened there. Um, he's card number 692 in the Chrome checklist, but the base checklist of 2021 Heritage High Number is Eric Fetty. So I don't know why Topps did that, what they were thinking, but that's his only Topps rookie logo card. He has a few Panini products. If you're into that thing, it's not for me. I would rather focus on those Heritage High Number rookies. They do already have uh, his season 
baked into it. He had a 3.6 war last year, and his card prices show it. So I'm not saying that there's there's value or you should go snag all these up because I think the price is already baked in. His Chrome, I, I want to say, say, sells for $10. And a lot of the 2021 rookies from that class, you could pick up for 5 7 bucks. So the value to that being his only rookie is baked in. But with that said, if he breaks out, if he goes to a contending team who needs a third baseman, you know, maybe the Orioles go try and get another starter at some point this season then his cards there's only one of them so if you're looking for a card to just throw in a box for later whenever wherever urias ends up because i don't think he stays in baltimore long term it's a guy that you know what could go wrong you spent 15 dollars on a refractor numbered to 579 or 569 oh well uh he did have a he was on a 22 homer pace not much in the way of speed but makes decent contact uh that's my notes on him but with all that said the 3.6 war and defensive abilities uh gold glove winner he's an all-around really good baseball player i want good baseball players on my team so he's a guy that i do enjoy we'll see how much playing time he gets this year what they do with him as far as lineup and and defensive construction goes but just keep an eye on his 2021 heritage high number uh, Kyle Stowers is probably in the seven hole. He's a 2023 tops rookie. Uh, so, you know, while people were chasing a lot of Adley and Gunner, uh, saw a lot of Stowers cards as well. And it's anytime you have a, a plethora of young rookies, it's, it's a good time to be excited about them. Stowers does have power. Um, but my issue is he's probably projected to platoon versus left-handed pitchers. I don't think he hits uh, righties very well or righties as good as he should. So I want to temper our excitement a little bit. Uh, a lot of strikeouts. He's entering his age 25 season, so there's plenty of time for him to improve. But big development year. This is this is Kyle Stowers time. Uh, there's a lot of prospects right behind him that are going to take up those corner outfield spots that are knocking at the door. So this is a big development for year for him. Uh, Stowers could be a post hype breakout too. Let's say he doesn't stick in Baltimore, he could be also be moved. I think he does have major league talent, but this is the year. This is the time for him to make a move. Uh, he only had 91 major league at bats, and I think he has like big flash potential. He could have a, a week, a month where he hits a ton of homers. Uh, I think he has 25 homer upside, and you know maybe he gets 450 at bats. I, I don't know if it's that many, but we'll see. Uh, I, I would project him probably around three to 400 at bats, but but if he gets to 450, maybe his numbers look a little better than I'm projecting them, and there's an opportunity to sell some of his cards, or like I said. Maybe, maybe he continues to get better. Only age 25 season. Uh, Austin Hayes is probably in the eight hole, another corner outfielder. Uh, Hayes, he's tricked me once, twice, and three times. He's a 2018 Topps rookie. Uh, I've been burned by him multiple times. I expected him to break out in 2021. I expected him to break out in 2022. So I'll go ahead and say it. He definitely won't break out this year. And if he does, I'll find his rookies. I have some stashed away somewhere. Uh, he's entering his age 29 season, but he has a lot of games in MLB. Uh, Hayes has, I, I think he is who he is. I'm not saying he's done, but he's a good number eight hitter. He's fine. 20 uh, ish homer potential. If they're one through nine, can hit 20 homers on the Orioles. That's what I'm saying that this offense could carry that really, really weak starting staff a long way, but I'm just not going to get overly excited about Austin Hayes cards. Uh, Adam Frazier's the nine hole hitter. Uh, I just talked about cards that didn't have a rookie logo. His 2017 Top Series 2 card did not have a rookie, but it is, you know, his his uh, his rookie card. Uh, I want to say he's interesting from a baseball perspective, uh, not from a baseball card perspective. You know, you have hobby good and baseball good. Those are two very different things. Adam Frazier's baseball good and has been very good. Um, he has almost zero collectability in my opinion, but... He's not far removed from a 2021 All-Star season where he was, uh, uh, he, he was I want to say, he batted 307, 315. He can get on base a lot. He could be a nice bounce back and could be a really good leader for this uh, young squad and turn the lineup over from that nine hole. Uh, bench, James McCann, I talked about him. Great ad. He's a 2015 Topps rookie. He's that, uh, you know, Adley breather day he's gonna get a lot of games at catcher jorge mateo i have him right now on the bench but i i assume he's gonna be starting a shortstop so you know this lineup has ramon urias batting sixth playing third in my opinion and gunner henderson batting third playing short so jorge mateo i say right now he's out but he's such a good defensive shortstop that he's probably a lot of late defensive replacements and some pinch hitting some pinch running he's one of the fastest baseball player and fastest players in baseball um 
the the issue though is that he's just not he's not a good enough hitter. Uh, he has a 5.5 K to walk ratio. He just strikes out way too much for his walks. His plate discipline is a 20 grade uh, on a scale of 20 to 80. So that means he has no plate discipline. Uh, helps the staff out by being such a great defender, but he has he just you know power or speed. That's it. He doesn't. He's not going to get a ton of base hits. He's not going to be on base a lot. Um, 35 steals last season. Maybe he repeats that, but only 13 home runs to go with that and a 27.5 strikeout rate. So I'm not going to get excited, but if you want to grab some Jorge Mateo rookies, 2021 tops rookie, again, in a lot of products, and he's in a uh, Padres uniform there. Taron Vavra gets on base a lot. That's one of my favorite things. He's likely to be a 2023 top series two rookie as well. So the Orioles had a lot of prospects come up. You know, they have three key rookies in 2023 series one. They're going to have probably three key rookies in 2023 series two or update. Um, Taron Vavra, I just said, gets on base. He has a one to one walk to K ratio. Uh, that's a Moneyball 2.0 guy. Moneyball, you know, get on base, get on base. Walks are as good of a as good as hits. So Vavra is a guy that doesn't have a, a lot of power, but a little bit of speed. And if he's on base a lot, he could be again a, a late inning ad where he's he's pinch running and and probably a platoon guy who gets some at bats. Uh, Ryan McKenna, strong side platoon with Stowers, maybe. Uh, McKenna could get a lot of at-bats. He's He spent a long time in the minors. He was drafted in 2015 um, and had 1,800 minor league at-bats going into the or- Coming into this season, uh, his his 2021 major minor league numbers were were small but great. And he only played 27 games. In those 27 games, he had 11 homers and seven steals. Uh, that's kind of nuts. So McKenna is kind of that power speed combo that I've talked about a lot in these videos and a lot specifically on this team. So we'll see what happens with McKenna. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go nuts with him. He's a he's a guy that uh, he. He is, I can't, I want to say, already had his breakout also um, as far as cards go. He's a 2021 Tops rookie. He's in Heritage High number also. Um, not, not a ton of upside, but but could be a guy that, I, you know, I said with Stowers, could be a flash in the pan where he has a great week, great month, and we, we get a little excited. I, I just wouldn't go nuts. Uh, Ryan O'Hearn, minor league depth, injury depth if something happens. Luan Diaz, he came over. Uh, he's a Mi- Miami Marlins cast off. A couple of homers this spring. Maybe he's a reclamation project for the Orioles. Maybe they can find something in his swing the f- that they missed in Miami. Uh, they brought over Nomar Mazzara, making his minor league round. This is his fifth team in five years. Don't get excited about him. Don't buy into the hype. I promise I have a Nomar Mazzara, Nomar Mazzara burn pile next to me as well. Uh, I've been burned. The bullpen for them, uh, Felix Bautista, very good pitcher, very dynamic. Um, he's locked into that closer role. He's he's their number one. Uh, they have quite the entrance theme song for him. Uh, Felix coming, very good. Still could get better. I, I, I think there's some more upside. He's still pretty young. Uh, he reminds me of that kind of Emmanuel Class A type pitcher where Class A came up and we saw all the raw skills. We saw Class A throw 102 and he wasn't he wasn't getting a lot of outs he could have been better so felix bautista was really good last year but there there are things that he could do to improve and maybe he takes another step forward from good closer to elite closer in that top five conversation with edwin diaz and uh you know josh Hader and obviously class a like i just said uh at the back end of that bullpen last year they had jorge lopez traded him for Cade povich um that was a sign that i thought they were overperforming if the the front office was ready to unload a huge bullpen piece for a guy who's two years away from the majors uh you know like i said sign that they were they also thought they were overachieving overachieving but Cade povich is a a decent one to keep an eye on like i said he's the guy right behind dl hall and grayson rodriguez as far as pitchers who uh, could come up and and have a long term impact, not just a guy who's e- e- eating innings. Uh, right in front of Bautista, and probably the eighth inning guy is Sainel Perez. Uh, Perez had a ridiculous year. He was seven and one from the bullpen. Seven wins. You know, wins and losses are nothing. They have to assign him to someone in these in these games where a starter maybe only goes for three or four innings, but. Perez did have a 1.4 ERA. He was fantastic. Uh, pitched in 66 games, so he was out there consistently day after day. And 2.8 WAR for a reliever, kind of nuts. So Sino Perez, I don't expect him to replicate that season, but it's not it's not up for debate. He's a great reliever with a great skill set. Uh, you know, 
when we look at bullpens, a lot of the bullpen pitchers that we see are failed starters. So out in the bullpen, they have Keegan Aiken, Tyler Wells, and Austin Voth, all failed starters who could thrive in that one inning role. Voth, we've seen uh, some flashes of brilliance when he was with Washington. So we'll see if that continues to improve or if, you know, maybe he's just a mop up guy, that long relief role. Um, prospects for the Baltimore Orioles. There are so many. The the top 20 list of the Orioles, I want to say most lists probably have 10 of their prospects in their top 100, so they're making up 10% of all MLB exciting prospects going into, the, into this season. Uh, Adley, obviously, he is upgraded to the uh, MLB level. He's not a prospect anymore. Gunner still does have prospect eligibility. He's number one on most lists and very exciting coming into the 2023 season. Uh, Grayson Rodriguez is on a lot of top 10 lists. He's number seven on either Keith Law or MLB. I think it's MLB. Uh, number seven. You know, I talked about him a little bit in his uh, the starting role. I, I hope he's the opening day, at least fifth starter. I wouldn't mind seeing him even in that four or three. I bet they're, that's a guy that they're not going to let him start 32 games. Maybe he starts 25, and they kind of, every time they have an off day, maybe they stretch him out to skip a start. But he is very good. He misses bats. And could be a very exciting uh, prospect this year. Jackson Holiday, 1-1 pick from 2022 draft. Matt Holiday's son. Uh, Holiday is a couple years away. I, I think he gets here a lot faster than Drew Jones does. Um, on Keith Law, he's number 19. On the MLB prospect list, he's number 12. Uh, he's a shortstop by trade, but if uh, Joey Ortiz, who I'm going to talk about, comes up and plays shortstop, maybe Holiday moves positions, or maybe Joey Ortiz moves positions. Um, his Bowman Chrome auto right now is 200 to $250. What I'll say about Holiday is I, I don't swim in that side of the pool. It's too deep for me. I, I don't buy Bowman Chrome autos above $200. I don't buy Bowman Chrome autos over $100. i am not going to play games. Um, but with that said, if you have money to spend, if you're looking for a prospect, I think that is a fine price point for Jackson Holiday. If we look at other players across the league who, you know, have that one-one tag and have come up and produced at the major league level, they sell for a lot more than two hundred dollars. So, Jackson Holiday could be a good buying target. He's too expensive for me, but that's just because I don't like being that strung out on one guy. Uh, I'd rather buy, you know, a Chrome lot for $10 a card and, and hope that they hit $20 or $30 a card. That's more my angle of speculating or trying to flip. So if you're looking at Jackson Holiday and you're interested, I would say pull the trigger. It's a it's a good price point for his skill set. Uh, Colton Kowser, uh, number 40 on the MLB prospect list. Uh, we should see him this year. He's an outfielder. You know, if Stowers or Santander or any of those guys are missing in the outfield, we could see Colton Kowser right away. Uh, good power-speed combo. Uh and gets on base a lot. That is, you will hear me always bring that up on a player that gets on base a lot. That that is a huge skill set. Uh, he's number forty on MLB's list. Keith Law has him on the just miss list. So, you know, a prospect list is is just one person's opinion or maybe a couple guys getting together. But to have discrepancy between fortieth on a list and then just missed Keith Law's list by over sixty picks, uh, you know, may, maybe there's something that I don't see. Maybe there's a hole in his game. But I like Kowser a lot. Uh, Jordan Westberg. You know, it's, it's funny. I just mentioned there's a 60-pick gap for Kowser on the two lists. Jordan Westberg is 73 and 74 on Keith Law and MLB list, respective. Um, he's an infielder, probably a second baseman, based on the Orioles roster construction. So what I mean by that is I expect Ortiz at short, Gunner at third, and then probably Westberg at second. Or maybe he can, he can transition to one of those corner outfield spots. Uh, Heston Kerstad is number 80 on the MLB list. Uh just a plethora of injuries for him. He was in 2020 Bowman draft. Um, what's exciting though, is after all these injuries have taken place, he's kind of lit it up. Uh, he was the 2022 AFL MVP, Arizona fall league MVP. Uh, and then he welcomed himself to this spring with two, a uh, two Homer game. So he's someone I'm really excited about. And obviously without the injuries, we'd probably be much, much more excited about him. I mean, we'd be talking about him probably at the major league level right now. Uh, number 99 on the MLB Top 100 list is Joey Ortiz. Uh, he's probably, I would say, weeks away from being called up. In my opinion, Jorge Mateo, you know, he's a he's a very skillful baseball player, but I would I would move on from him. If you're trying to develop prospects, if you're trying to make your team competitive uh, now and in the future, I want major league players getting major league at bats. Joey Ortiz is just as good with the glove as Jorge Mateo. 
great range, so he's going to continue to help your pitching staff get out, get outs. And with Mateo's horrible on base percentage, just get Ortiz up there. He could he could do that. He could be on base, you know, one, uh, three out of ten times. He he's fine. I, I would I would start him opening day, but. I don't run the Orioles. They're a lot smarter than I am. Uh, he he doesn't strike out a lot, which is one of my favorite things to see. If you put the bat on the ball, it's a good opportunity for you to, to get hits, period. Uh, power potential is developing. Uh, he could develop into 20 homer power. We'll see. Uh, but in my opinion, opening day isn't out of the question. Joey Ortiz, 2019 Bowman draft. I said they nailed that draft. Gunner, Adley, Joey Ortiz. Uh, all guys we could see soon, probably late. 2023, early 2024, Connor Norby, Cesar Priado, Reed Trimble, and then Cade Povich, I've mentioned multiple times. And then on the injured list right now is Seth Johnson. He came over in that Mancini trade, and then Kobe Mayo, uh, early 2025 projection. So the Orioles have a lot of talent coming. And if we project their like 2025 opening day starting roster, eight, eight or seven of the position players should be guys that have debuted in the last two seasons. And then, like I said, Cedric Mullins holding down that center field spot. It's a very good lineup and good outcome because these guys aren't, you know, this isn't potential guys at single A we're talking about. These are guys at, at the triple A, double A level who are producing, who could make impacts right now. Uh, potential buying targets. I've mentioned them along the way, but Joey Ortiz in 2019 Bowman draft. Uh, I think you have a very small window to buy. His card prices are already up a little bit, but if he does make the opening day roster and, and has a good April, his cards will see a jump. There's no doubt about it. Um, I, I don't know what that, you know, the gap looks like from what his prices are now to where they end up, but I could see a 30, 40, 50% increase with no issue. Um, after Ortiz, Gunnar Henderson's my number one buy. I, I just think he is, he's, his prices are really high already, but I think he is an absolute stud who could put, put up numbers that we're just, you know, in awe of. Think of Acuna in 2019, 30 30 potential legitimately. He's exciting, he's young, he could make a really big difference in that lineup and propel this team from bottom dwellers to actual potential playoff contenders. And Gunnar is that dude. Uh, he's close in price to Adley cards, but I think he should be much higher. He's three years younger, and I think a good target to buy if you want to buy someone to make money on. Uh, Kyle Bradish, he's my penny stock. Doesn't sell for much. I picked up an Independence Day rookie for five dollars plus five shipping. Uh, end of the year looked really good, and not in my opinion, we were looking at rookie pitchers. I don't need guys that get outs. I need guys that get strikeouts because if you keep players off the base paths. You're in a good position to find a way to, to keep your ERA down and keep your team in games. You know, if you have guys on first and third and nobody out, Kyle Bradish actually has the ability to strike out the side from that moment and save a run. So Bradish is a guy I'm keeping an eye on. And then Jordan Westberg uh, is kind of a, you know, what do we do with this guy? He may not stay on the O's uh, just because of their roster construction. There's a lot of guys at second. There's a lot of guys coming up to the corner outfield. Where does he go? Does he end up? You know, probably not New York, which would be best case scenario when you're looking at those types of uh, cards, you know, trades. New York goes nuts. But where does Westberg go? I could see him in another uh, uniform by the end of this season, and maybe he's a big piece for someone else. Uh, future Hall of Famers on this team, this is a, a thing I like to cover. I don't see any yet. Um, I just talked about how young this team is, how many exciting prospects they have coming up. Uh, if you had to make me pick someone, I, I can't even begin to be, to write anything down. Uh, they're just so young. They're so far away. Keep an eye on Gunner. He's the, the most likely just because of his age at the MLB level. That's it. Yes, he has the talent to do it, but having talent and proving yourself at the major league level, two very, very different things. All right, final wrap-up on the Orioles. They're young. Uh, they'll score some runs, but I don't know if they can keep a lead. Uh, you know, how many leads will they even have? <laughs> they have a good bullpen, but the staff at the front, I just, I have no idea what to expect um, from Grayson Rodriguez, from D.L. Hall. And then what I, I, I know what to expect from Kyle Gibson, and it's not anything exciting. Uh, Cole Irvin could take a step forward. Kyle Bradish could take a step forward. But I'm just not putting a ton of stock in them being able to uh, keep their team in games for long periods of time. Uh, the over-under. Um, the you know betting sites MGM I think is where I pulled this one. Baltimore is at seventy six and a half wins. I would take the under, but I don't like it at all. Like I, I'm picking one because I have to pick one because you can't win seventy six and a half games. The AL East is a dogfight. 
But with the MLB playing all, you know, the Orioles are going to play all 29 teams next year. They play a little less games against the AL East. Maybe they can sneak out some wins against opponents they don't normally play. Um, but anytime you upgrade your, your win total by 27 wins, you're just way above projections. It's hard to sustain that project or hard to sustain that win rate when we don't see it. You know, you, you got lucky. You played well and above expectations at every aspect. So maybe they can win 75 games. But I would take the under on that 76 and a half. Um, they're, they're young, and they're good, but they're a year away. It, still, they, they, need, they need more starting pitching. Uh, guys, thank you. That's my Orioles preview going into the 2023 season. I'll post some of these notes and my potential buys in the uh, show notes because I like to come back and see how I did. Maybe I can make a highlight video of, of what I saw going into the season and then what the actual season did. So if you guys are interested, check out the description. The links in there take you to all kinds of different places. I have an eBay link. I have an Amazon link. Those are all affiliate links. So if you click on those, I greatly appreciate it. Uh, that's you know kind of why I make these videos. The opportunity to talk about baseball, one. And then two, you know, no one's paying me to do this. I, I make uh, you know 11 cents on a video from YouTube, so nothing to get too crazy about. But those sponsored links do help me out. So if you you know you're enjoying the content, and you want to say thank you. That's one way to do it. Uh, throw a like on the video if you're enjoying the content and subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to make this for all 30 teams. Uh, I would love to see a little more interest on the videos, and maybe this is something that and the the year two or year three process they really start to take off. But I I really appreciate you guys watching the videos, and hopefully I'll see you next time.